Last time we talked about updating a uh, updating using a grid view, and we're going to continue with that. Um, and the big difference, the big thing that we're adding um, in in these in, in like last lecture and this lecture, is we're talking about template columns because. Um, Again, this goes back to the discussion of do you write it yourself or do you like use the framework to do it? And writing it yourself gives you the ability to write, do whatever exactly precisely what you wanted to do. Whereas the framework has certain default behaviors in it. All right. Um, And if you have a uh, if you have something that, that that sort of matches up with the default behaviors, then you're in business, right? Just use a framework. Why kill yourself and, and work harder than you need to? All right. Whereas if you have something that is really different, like the voting was sort of different because values came into that insert statement from all over the place. All right. Um, so in that case. Um, you know, it was best for us to write our, our own custom code. There's sort of a middle ground, though, and that is taking and tweaking the default behavior of the template to get a closer match to what you want. And that might be just perfect for your situation. And that's where template columns come in. Template columns allow you to take the default behavior of um, a, a grid view and, and customize it some do things a little bit differently. In other words, the default behavior of a grid view is that when you click edit, you go into a mode where all the labels for the editable fields turn into text boxes. And there's no validation done on those text boxes. Well, obviously that's not adequate, right? We, in many cases, are going to want validation, all right? So we can tweak the template by making a template column, or we can tweak the, the grid view by making a template column and adding a validation control. And that's what we did last time. Um, if we don't want it to be a text box, we can make it whatever we want. So for example, um, the example that we gave last time, we had a sales rep. Well, we wouldn't want a text box where you'd have to type in the number of the sales rep. That would be very difficult. You know, people aren't going to know who the sales rep is. Well, instead, you would want a drop down. And so that's what we're going to work on today, is we're going to create a drop down for the sales rep. So let's open this up. Again, this is no spoiler, but my favorite character in Stranger Things is Dustin. Because he doesn't care what's going on, he just likes to see Eleven do cool stuff. Yeah. You know, that's all that's all he's about. Is Eleven that little girl? Eleven's a little girl, yeah. My my daughter actually won a, a Halloween costume uh, party. It was actually a Stranger, theme, oh, you Stranger told Things Stranger Things. Yeah, and she went to it and she actually won uh, best costume. Nice. Because she has the very shorn, short hair as well. And she kind of resembles uh, Eleven. I mean, in, in very basic terms. But, you know, she dressed up and, and so on. And, and um, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it's it pretty good. <laughs> Actually, it makes it hard for me to watch that show sometimes. Because when I see Eleven, I, I, it's like I see my daughter in place of that, you know. And it's like, oh, no. They can't do this to you. <laughs> All right. My guilty pleasure is The Walking Dead. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I've not, seen, not seen any of it. Um, the most I've seen of The Walking Dead is the horrified reactions after the season <laughs> opener this year. <laughs> Right, 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 right. Yeah, you're probably better prepared than. 
I've also not seen Game of Thrones. What? <laughs> I don't have HBO, dude. <laughs> there are... I shouldn't say that well, <laughs> I know, I know, but I, I generally don't do that. All right. So, again, let's look at the grid view and what we did for the customer name. is we turned it, the customer name into a template field. And then we made the edit item template have a validation control in it. Because remember, the default behavior is not to have any validation on it. And you know what? You know, you might say, boy, that's kind of dumb. You should be able to just click something and get validation. Well, you know, the framework's doing a good part of your work for you. You know, uh, the fact that you have to go in and add validators is really not that big of a deal. You know, it's doing, you know, 60, 70% of your work for you. So, you know, don't complain if you have to go in and add a validator control. Um, a lot of times when you build a tool like this, um, you know, go for the basic functionality. And, and if people have to custom code a little bit, then you know, so be it. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to make the sales rep ID column be a drop down instead of a text box. Because right now, if I go and run this, I go into edit mode, it's just going to be a text box, and we have to uh, manually enter in the sales rep ID. And that's not good. Templates. 
and I can go and pick sales rep ID, and I'm interested in the edit item template. And right now it's a text box. I'm going to get rid of that text box. And I'm going to drag over a drop down. So far, this should look pretty familiar to you because we've done drop downs before and we've bound them to data sources. So I'm going to choose a data source. And I'm going to pick SQL Data Source 2, right? That's the one I just created for the sales reps. You then have two values that you have to pick. You have to pick the display field and the value field. Remember, the display field should be something that the user is going to see and that the user can understand. So our assumption was that the user isn't going to understand the sales rep ID, right? The sales rep ID doesn't give any information, but the name does. So I'm going to pick last name to be the display field, all right? Select a data field. This is a field that is going to be used to update the database. And what do I want for that? I want it to be the sales rep ID, right? So I want to display the sales rep name, but I want to use and actually store in the database the sales rep ID. All right? So again, we're accommodating people because people don't understand, people don't know what those sales rep IDs represent. And yet, the database requires a sales rep ID. So we're displaying the one thing and we are storing the other thing. Now, there's one last thing that we need to do. We need to click on Edit Data Bindings. Because this is what's going to connect that drop-down to the database. All we've done so far is we've, we've created a drop-down that shows a list of sales rep IDs. We need to attach that drop-down to the sales rep ID field in the customer table. So. I'll click Edit Data Bindings. And sometimes this is available. I, I am not able to predict why sometimes this is, this is uh, available and sometimes not. So we're going to have to type in the custom binding. So I'm going to go and look. Just want to make sure I got the syntax right. Edit data bindings. And I'm going to say bind sales rep ID. Okay. What does that do? If I just created the drop down and skipped that step, I would have a drop down that I could pick a sales rep ID. It just wouldn't get put in the database. All right. I would be able to select a sales rep, but it would never go back and put it into the database. So what that step does is that says, you know that sales ID that I just picked um, in the dropdown? Yeah, well that goes in the sales rep ID of the customer table. All right, so let's run this and make sure that it works. So right now, sales rep ID is one for Mike. I hit that. I have a drop down. I can pick Davis and save. And it changed it to sales rep ID two. All right. Questions about that? The thing that I think is confusing, and your mileage may vary, but the thing that I think is confusing is that extra step on the end of edit data bindings. 
Setting up the dropdown is the same as we always have done with dropdowns. We can define the dropdown and then we can, we can um, bind it to a data source. That simply gives us a dropdown. We have to say that dropdown, the value of that dropdown, here's where it comes from and here's where it goes in the database. So that's why we have to click that edit data bindings and tie it to the sales rep ID in the customer table. If we didn't do that, we'd be able to select the sales rep, but then it wouldn't store it back in the database. Now, right now, this um, looks okay, except when we get back into read-only mode, we're still seeing the sales rep ID. It would be nice if we saw the customer name. Now, there's a handful of ways that you could deal with this. Here's the way I usually deal with this, all right? Because I already have the data source anyhow, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the item template, which is the display of the sales rep ID. I'm going to make that into a dropdown as well. So I'll go and add a drop-down list, choose data source, SQL data source 2, field of display, last name, edit data bindings, and now if we run this, then we see the sales rep name here. Now, one tiny last thing is I can actually select the drop down there even though I'm in read-only mode. So that's a quick fix. Um, do you remember the old commercial for the, I think it was for the Apple iStore or whatever it's called. Um, there's an app for that. There's an app for that. Your mantra when you're doing um, object-oriented programming is, should be, there's a property for that or there's a method for that. So I can make this read-only simply by clicking this and saying that it is and not showing the properties. Well, are we going to let that stop us? Of course not. We're programmers. We can look up and we can hand code that if necessary. So I'm going to go in ASP.NET drop down list properties Something wrong with the R key. So I search for properties.
this shows a list of all the properties that, that exist for it. And scanning through this, it looks like enabled is the guy that I'm after. Which is a Boolean. So, I should be able to go in even though our properties window is not cooperating, I should be able to go in and say enabled equals false. And now when I run it, It shows the value of the drop-down, but I can't select it. So I'm truly in read-only mode. Yay! All right. Now we could do more with this, right? Um, instead of a drop-down, we could make uh, radio buttons, and it would work exactly the same way. Um, again, you know, if you study object-oriented design and programming with inheritance, you'll quickly see that these objects in the framework sort of inherit from uh, a certain class structure. And therefore, like, just like, you know, um, so, so things like drop-downs and radio buttons are like really closely related, all right? So what you can do to one, you can typically do to the other because they have a common ancestor in um, the object framework. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to get into the details view and doing editing on there. And it's mostly going to be the same. That's the good news. Um, there is a twist, though, because we can insert with a details view in addition to doing an update and delete. So that's the one advantage that we have to a details view. So what I'm going to do in this app is I'm going to make the, the customer ID a link. That when you click on it, you go to a details view. Now again, the details view is going to show the same thing that the grid view shows, right? But you might do this in an actual application if you had a whole bunch of fields in, in the customer table and you only showed a handful of them in the grid view. In our case, we only have a few fields, so the, the effect is going to be um, not quite as dramatic. So I'm going to go make a detail page and I'm going to link to it from this page and um, then I'm going to put a details view on it that I can edit. All right. So let's start by get rid of customer ID. Actually, I'm going to make the name the link. So I'm going to get rid of the customer name as well. And I'm going to add a, a hyperlink field. We bump it up there. Our hyperlink field this comes into the data navigate URL fields. What do I want to pass on the URL from this page to the details page so that I pull up the proper customer number, or pull up the proper customer information? I want to pass the customer ID, right? That's what uniquely identifies a customer. That's what we call up customers by. So I'm going to say customer ID. And data navigate URL, or detail navigate, data navigate URL. 
I'm going to call the page detail.aspx question mark ID equals curly bracket zero curly bracket which means that I'm going to plot the first the value of element zero which is customer ID into that position on the URL and what do I want the text field to be I want it to be customer name And again, showing that I practice what I preach, I'm going to test this part to make sure that it works. I haven't written detail page yet, but I can at least see the URL that it calls. And sure enough, it tells me that URL doesn't exist. But it looks like the URLs at least form correctly. So that's good news. All right, so let's go and create that details page. New file. Web form. And I'm going to put on it a SQL data source and a details view. What's my SQL data source going to be? It's going to be I like to vary up between using the easy way and using the hard way just for practice. So my select statement is going to be select star from customer. Where ID equals question mark. Next, I have to give a value for this. Where is it coming from? The query string. What's the query string field called? ID. Test the query. There's an error. And it said no values. Blah, blah, blah. What does that mean? No values given for one or more required parameter. trying to tell me is that it can't find a database column. And I see my mistake right away. Should be customer ID. Now I go type in one and it should bring up that customer. And now I go and I bind that um, to the data source, and away I go. I'm going to make this guy the start page because I always want to go through it. I click on that. I go to my details view, and there we go. All right. Yay. Of course, I can't update or delete. This is the basic stuff that we've done already in this class. Our next step is to make it updatable and et cetera. So what I'm going to do is this. I lost my train of thought. I am going to 
go into the detail page, and I have to add, for me to be able to insert, update, and delete on this, I have to add the insert, update, and delete SQL statements. Fortunately, I have a copy of them right here, so I'm going to copy them. Let's do updates first. So I'm going to copy the update statement. And I'm going to put it in the update statement of my SQL data source. tracking in case there was an error. Because right now, any database error I get, we're going to get the ugly screen. All right? And we don't want that. So we want the same sort of error trapping in the, grid, uh, in the details view as we had in the grid view. So we need to do that. And I'm going to repeat that simply because you know, we've only seen an example of this once, or once or twice maybe, so it'll be beneficial to see another example of it. So, I'm going to go into the code view, and on the details view, I'm going to say on row updated equals Grid view updated event args 
in the other example. This one is details views updated, but it's about the same thing. What this is, is this is information about the update that just occurred or didn't occur. All right. So this E argument that gets passed to this event automatically through the framework contains the information that we need to know about what just happened. Did the update work or not? And specifically what we're going to do is we're going to look for an exception in that E object. If there's an exception that exists in the E object, then we have a problem. And we need to, to quit. All right? Or we need to process that some way. Um, if there isn't an error, then that's fine. All right? So, if e dot exception not equal null, I know that sounds like a double negative, but if it's not null, it means that there's something there, and uh, something in the exception means that there was a problem, then what do I want to do? Well, I probably want to display something on a label. So let me go and create a label on this page. here and say label tell me there's an error, I'm going to go ahead and try it anyhow. Let's tell me the bill failed. Label error does not exist in the current context. known as the Kenny Rogers School of Programming. Got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. So, I guess I didn't need to delete this one, but I did. Error updating, 
And again, we would write a more complete error message saying like why we thought there may be an error, maybe database, perhaps database maintenance is going on, and so on and so forth. All right. And then we have to tell the framework that we got this, right? Because if we don't, it doesn't know if we're handling this error or not unless we tell it. So I'm going to say e dot exception handled equals true. All right. So now, if we get any kind of error, user friendly error message as opposed to the ugly error message. in here that we have to do is real similar to what we've done before. So let's go in and do that. I am going to make my customer name and my sales rep ID template numbers or template fields. So I'm going to edit columns, edit fields. I'm going to edit templates. My customer name for edit item. I'm going to add a validator. Again, it's not letting me get to the properties, which is bothersome. But I can go and code it here. I can give the error message. Must enter name. And I can put control to validate equals text box one. All right. Now, last but not least, I can go in and edit templates again. Pick my edit item template for the sales rep ID. Add a drop down instead. Create a data source. data source, SQL data source 2, field I want to display, this should be the same as the other one, the value is going to be sales rep ID, and then edit data bindings, and again, as I said, with no rhyme or reason, this time that top one's enabled, and I can simply say I want to bind it to the sales rep ID, and I want it to be two-way binding. 
Two-way binding means that you, you select the value when it comes in and you select the value when it goes out. So the initial value of the dropdown comes from the database, the final value of the dropdown updates the database. And we should be in business. same thing with the template for the read-only mode for this guy. And there we go. All right. I'm detecting a very low energy level in the room. Everyone seems exhausted. To be honest, I'm a little tired myself. So we're going to call it a day. All right. I, you know, I can just tell. And I don't blame you. It's been a rough week. <laughs> uh, and, and so uh, this will give you an opportunity to, to, vote, to devote more time to, to uh, your labs to work on. All right, so I'm going to call it a day. We'll pick up on doing the insert on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes. Um, all right, we'll see you in lab. I'll go unlock the lab and I'll.